Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Safir TV's special series on Hajj, a journey of a lifetime. My name is Ali Hassan, and I'm joined by our Hajj expert. Now, I have a question for you. Do you own a gun? And would you like to take it with you while you go on this journey? Let's find out. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sheikh, let's say I have legally acquired a gun, as you can in certain countries, etc. Um, am I allowed to take it with me? Because I'm used to it. I carry around with me, whichever state allows me to. Um, am I allowed to take this with me? And while I'm in that state, that special state, can I still carry it around with me? I just feel more secure that way. Mm. No, no. When you are <laughs> in a state of ihram, you're not allowed to carry a weapon. Okay. Of any, any, of any sort? Any sort of weapon. You are not allowed. Knife, sword? No, not at all. Okay. Because you are in a state of ihram. You are in a state of showing peace uh, with others. You are in a state of being uh, in, in an environment where it's full of peace for everyone. So you are not allowed to carry any weapon, even though that may seem that you are, you are not initiating any war, you are not declaring anything, but you are not supposed to carry any kind of weapon. Let us remember one thing. Yes. When Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam built <clears throat> and uh, ra raised the walls of Al-Kaaba, and of course later on at the time of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the masjid was built. This area, as per the Holy Quran, not only in this area, even in the area what we call it Makkah today, وَمَنْ دَخَلَهُ كَانَ آمِنًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says clearly, anyone who enters into this place will be at peace. Right. His peace is assured. He will be protected right. uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's no need of carrying any weapon in this particular area. Sure. Arabs, after Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam passed away, they used to chase one another, maybe for some reasons. Uh, well, we, we are after this particular individual. But if he enters into this area, they would wait. Oh. Say, no, we are not going inside because this is a holy place. Mm. We'll wait for him until he comes out. Then there will be other issues between ourselves. Okay. So here, this area, and especially when you are in a state of ihram, no carrying of any kind of weapon. Sure. So there's absolutely no need to, especially when you're in this sort of safety zone. Indeed. And everybody, there's like a, um, an agreement especially from all the way back then. So mm. if you owe somebody money and you're being chased, just stay near the Kaaba mm. and you'll mm. be fine. Okay, thank you for that. Most but sure. that's we're talking about safety there when, when we refer to weapons, etc., or defending yourself. But what about in a case where you have a, a some sort of a knife that you may want to use when slaughtering an animal or for hunting? Let's talk about hunting for a second. Are you allowed to hunt? Um, and if so, what are the rulings? No, when you're in a state of ihram, you're not allowed to hunt. And this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned it very clearly. When you're in a state of ihram, no. But we may understand, I may understand this particular question, why? Because when you look at uh, the time before we have these hotels nowadays in Makkah, Medina, people used to carry their food right. when they used to go for of course. hajj. So... Let's say you have your rice, you have your flour, you have everything you want to cook there, but there's no meat. So the idea of hunting maybe came, while I am in Makkah, I can go hunting, bring this animal, and then we can uh, eat. Sure. You can do that, but not in a state of ihram. So that's why hunting is not uh, allowed. Point blank. Point blank. Right. Hunting. Hunting. Yes. Any animal that you would normally hunt. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's that's straightforward. Um, drawing of blood. Mm -hmm. Let's say someone hurt themselves. Okay, so obviously blood came out. What do you do then? Uh, accidentally, someone, yeah. uh, no problem at all. You, okay. you have uh, to take care of that in, in any way to cover the blood, see a doctor, no problem at all. Sure. For you to intend right. to take blood out of your body, Self-inflicted. Self-inflicted is not allowed. Right. 
There is, there is let's say, a, a place in your body you think uh, there is uh, some sort of blood. Let me squeeze it to come out. Okay. You are in a state of ihram. You are not allowed to do that. Sure. You know, for example, if I, I, I have, uh, let's say, a sort of injury. Sure. If I press this, blood will come out. Sure. You are in a state of ihram, you are not allowed to do that. So what do you do? Are you allowed to put a bandage around it? Put a bandage. Oh, that is allowed? Yeah, while you're that resting. particular okay. area, yes. That particular area. Yeah. Okay, uh, you said self-inflicting. What about those individuals that are perhaps diabetic? And it is advisory for them. I don't know how it actually works. If the doctor says it's mandatory for you to check on periodically, during the day, after you've eaten, you know, while you're in a state of fast, for example, there's various, various reasons to take blood out mm -hmm. using a small device, put it in to check your blood sugar level. Because you're diabetic, you need sure. to monitor that. What about that? So here, whatever we have mentioned so far, this is a primary, uh, we were mentioning primary rulings. Sure. You are not allowed to uh, take blood from your body. However, secondary ruling for the medical reasons, you want to check your blood sugar, here you're allowed to do that. Why? Because it's for medical purposes. Sure. If you don't do that, you may be in problems maybe. And the doctors have advised you to do. So listen to the doctors, check your blood sure. and continue with your ihram. No worries at all. Thank you. That's actually quite straightforward. Mm. Uh, this whole talk about blood has actually reminded me of, for example, if you were to, uh, I don't know, kill an insect. If you step on, stomp on an ant or whatever, mm. not that you should mm. ever be doing mm. that. Um, so what, what about insects? I'm sure insects are everywhere. Um, what do you do with regards to spiders, ants, anything that you fear? You know, like say you have a phobia. Yeah. Are you allowed to kill it or do you have to shush it away? Or mm -hmm, what do you do? Mm -hmm. So let's go practically uh, in the area of uh, Arafat. Okay. This area of Arafat, as we mentioned, uh, it's recommended to be there uh, the night before the, the day of Arafah, which is the 9th. And we are going to discuss on this particular issue in detail. Sure. That particular area, when you go there, there are a lot of mosquitoes. Oh. So mosquitoes are troublemaking insects. They're annoying. You are not allowed <laughs> to kill them. Oh, wow. You are in a state of ihram. You are not allowed to kill any insect. However, you mentioned uh, things like snakes, yeah, sure, sure. the scorpions. creepy crawlies. That, yeah, I, yeah. So let's let's talk. Tell me about snakes. Yeah, uh, are you allowed to? You are allowed to kill them. Oh, because it's instant poisonous. Poisonous may cause death. So scorpion, scorpions too. Okay, any poisonous, any poisonous uh, uh, insect, if we can call them, you are allowed to kill them. So anything not poisonous, for example, a rodent, um, mouse. Is that yes. okay to just kind of sure. shoo them also, away? Yeah. What yeah. do you do with mosquitoes, though? I don't think you gave us a solution to that because I'm quite concerned. Just be as uh, gentle as possible. So can you just yes. brush them away? Yeah, brush them wow. away. Wow. Uh, and uh, we don't know really for what reason we cannot. So if you're sleeping, try to avoid because there are some people. We, we have seen, for example, in areas like in Africa, mosquito uh, lands on your... Uh, hand, and you it, kill it. Yeah, automatically, yeah. without thinking about it. Yeah. So, intentionally, you're not allowed to do it. Okay. If it happens accidentally, that's another issue. And that's probably, we, we're going to talk about that in the exceptions, Indeed. clauses, and everything. And penalties as well, we'll talk about Ooh, that. Oh, there's penalties yeah. for that. Um, I'm going to ask another question. It's a little bit disgusting, so bear with me. Is it true that lice should not be removed from a pilgrim's body? Lice. So, you know, they have these little nasty bugs, whatever you call yeah, them. Yeah, if someone, it happens that he has them on the head, and if it happens, if he takes them out, this may cause blood to come out. Okay. Avoid. So it's best to avoid, avoid. something like that. Yeah. Interesting. Um, you said that sometimes, it, it's true, uh, We have it's human nature to, as soon as a bug lands on you, you're either shushing it away or you're just trying to mm. kill it and get rid of it. Um, what if someone, if this is true, that's not good, we, we should try to change ourselves. But what if someone is used to using profanity in their almost day-to-day -day, mm. uh, language? Yeah. You know, all oh, this and all oh, that. And it's kind of common ground for them to do that sure. now. Sure, sure. Uh, what happens 
t please tell me about using profanity. We have a term uh, in regards with these uh, things which are haram, not allowed to be to, to be done while you're in a state of ihram, is fusuq. So you're using foul language. Sure. Uh, Abusive language, abusive foul language. language. Foul language. Sure. You go, let's say, around the tawaf, uh, around the al kaaba while you're doing tawaf, you're wearing ihram. Someone accidentally pushes you. You use foul language. Okay. As you say, there are some people are like that. Yeah. Don't use. That will incur penalty in the state of ihram. So be as gentle as possible. And alhamdulillah, many hujjaj, before they go for hajj, they are aware of this particular uh, ruling. ruling that sure. you're not allowed to use uh, language which is not for the Hajj. And do they kind of practice not Majority, cussing? yes. But as you say, there are some people after two, three words, uh, two, three sentences, up. they use that. Please try to avoid that. I know we're going to talk about penalties in great detail in just a little bit, a different episode. But will just to get an idea, is it per word, like per cuss word, if you were to say that, this is the penalty? Or is it like one sentence, you've said it, or you said it in the afternoon, you use a few cuss words in the afternoon, this is how much you have to pay, or this is what you have to do, etc. Mm. It, uh, it, it's per word, of course, especially if you keep in word. your mind, yeah, the hadith of the Holy Prophet, sallallahu wow. alayhi wa sallam, al-Muslim, Man salim al muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi. A Muslim is the one who other Muslims are kept safe from his hand or tongue. He doesn't use foul language. Don't use your hand. Don't use language, sure. bad language. So uh, we need to remember that. Thank you for that. Um, now let's talk about this. So someone's talking and they're not talking about anything religious. So we're doing the wolf. And I turn around to the guy and I say, I turn around and I say, uh, for example, hey, how's uh, your cryptocurrency doing? How's your shares? You know, I heard it was a very bearish market. I talk about the economy. I talk about politics, whatever. Is that allowed? Talking for the sake of talking, it's OK. But if the talking will take you to the arguments, Oh. And the arguments which will take you for the worldly issues, as we say, that kind of argument is not allowed. There is, there is a kind of argument you may go into, and that is to discuss about someone, let's say, wants to bring his own ideas within the religion to talk about the jurisprudential issues and he doesn't know, or ideological issues he doesn't know. You can argue for the sake of making someone to understand. A dialogue. Dialogue, better. Debate, sure. maybe, yeah. Sure. But if it involves arguing for the sake of arguing, avoid that. Thank you. While you're in a state of ihram. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say lying is obviously not allowed. Of course. Please validate that. Thank of you. Um, what about, you know, certain people have this um, way of speaking where they say, by Allah. I swear by Allah mm. that that's what's going to happen. That has happened. You know, this happened here at this particular time. Is that allowed? Are you allowed to swear by Allah? No. In general uh, sense, you are not allowed. And even in, in normal circumstances, you are not allowed. And there are unfortunately some people, as you say, one sentence, they say, Wallah. Another sentence, <laughs> Billah. Another one, Tallah. Wallahi, Billahi, Tallah. You are not allowed to use this uh, these kind of uh, swearing words when you are in a state of ihram. Pretty straightforward. Thank you so much. We've come to a close for this particular episode. But, Sheikh, there are many more interesting episodes to come. And this is obviously a message for all you viewers out there, our beloved viewers. Thank you so much for sticking around with us from the start. And guess what? There is, of course, many more. And uh, please do stick around. The next topic of discussion is going to be on al Dawaf, the big one. Okay, that's when we go around the Kaaba. So many, so many details to discuss at that time. So please stay tuned for the next episode. Until we meet again next time, take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.